When we start talking about offensive game planning, there's a couple points we're going to hit on, and we'll go through each one in separate chapters on this tape. First thing we always want to look at is self-scout. What are we doing? Uh, what are our tendencies? Second thing we want to look at are defensive tendencies. What are some things that they're doing that they might not even know that they're doing by formation and that kind of stuff? Then we'll talk about our film watch, how we go through specifically into our film watch, and then we'll talk about the six S's of game planning. To start, I want to talk about self-scout. When we talk about self-scout, it used to be that you needed a system. Um, maybe that's linked. A lot of guys now have the digital audio video editing system, and uh, you're able to link that to some sort of game plan system. Uh, even if you don't have anything like that, it's as simple as getting Microsoft Excel and working that out and sorting by uh, building spreadsheets, sorting by different formations and, and different uh, fields. When we look at it, and there's a million ways to look at it, the top things we look at is I always want to know uh, before the defense even starts to watch their film what my tendencies are. So obviously I'll go through and we'll say, okay, we're in game six. The games that they have, at least the games that we think they have, are games three, four, and five, and we'll obviously plug those into the computer. One of the benefits we have as an offensive coach that I don't think a defensive coach has is our side of the ball is usually pretty active, whereas the defensive side of the ball is reactive. So I think a lot more, if you want to stay ahead of the curve, you can do so by looking at your own self-scout because they're probably going to pay a little bit more attention to what we're doing as an offense because we're, we're active than we're going to do depending on what they're doing on defense because they're reactive. So it sounds a little confusing, but based on that, I think the one thing we don't do enough as coaches is self-scout because they're going to pay attention more to what we do. And if we know what our tendencies are, we can go ahead and we can tweak those. I'll talk about how we categorize those later. But when we look at it, the first thing we always look at is play. So we'll say, okay, what's our top play? What's our um, anything that's 5% of the offense or more, I want to know what our top three run plays are, our top three pass plays. What are we overusing? What are we underusing? And that's big too. Based on what we thought going into the season or going into this game, what are we not using enough? The second thing we'll look at, obviously, is play by formation. So we'll go ahead and take a look at play by formation, and we'll say, okay, based out uh, out of these formations, these are the plays we're running. And this is the obvious one that most defenses will look to in normal downs, first downs and second downs, ones that aren't predicated off getting the balls to the sticks. Normal downs where offenses are, are going to try and cover up formations with leverage. So we'll look at what plays we're running by formation. Obviously, we'll also look at play by down and distance, what are our top normal downs? And a lot of times what we'll do is when we segment down and distance, this is the way we do it. I don't think you have to adjust it. I know a defense is, defenses do adjust it. But I think when you set up your filters for how you're going to do it, it's probably best if you do it based on what your percentages are of run pass. For instance, in the offense that we run, we're a 50-50 run pass team. So our normal downs are going to be those downs that we are 50-50 run pass on roughly. So for us, we talk about our down and distance is this. We'll talk about first and 10 or first and whatever, because first and five, we're going to link in with first and 10. Only happens a couple times. We're going to talk about second and short. Second and short is going to be one through three yards for us. Second and medium. Medium is going to be four through six yards, always. Second and long is going to be seven plus, OK? Third down, we'll go to third and short. Now this one, I just go one and two because in our offense, third and three is a distinctly different category because that is a true 50-50 run pass. I don't think you need to do that. I think you can keep the parameters the same and say third and short is one to three. If you want to make third and three separate, then go ahead and do it. For us, it is. We can say third and medium, which is again, third and four to six, and third and long, which is anything that's seven plus. Uh, when I was younger, I would do a, a long plus, which is long was 7 to 10, and long plus was anything 10 yards plus, and I had a whole separate category and talk about setting yourself up for failure. We don't want to be in those situations. If we are, we're, we're playing from behind anyway. So those are the down and distances we use, and then obviously we put 
we put all fourth downs in because it's last chance to the sticks, those kind of things. And then fifth and three would be obviously all of our two point conversions. Okay, so that's how we end up linking them. The only place that I could see these parameters tripping you up is if you're a team that doesn't punt a lot once you cross midfield. Now you might want to take a look at your third and mediums and third and shorts, if you're going for it a ton of the time, the vast majority anyway, now looking at it more as a second and medium. Because once you hit here, people assume it's one play shot, you know, one and done. So if you're going for it on fourth down, I think you have to give at least a little bit of credence to the fact that maybe you need to look at some of these once you cross midfield, more like second downs, because if you don't make it, Obviously, you have another opportunity, so that's dependent on your offense. But that's what we'll look at in terms of down and distance. And then the last one we'll look at is field position. So when we step up there on the field, where are we? We split it up by field position. So if this is the 50 and we're going this way, we're going up in, however you want to say it, we're going to use everything on this side, obviously, as a minus, and everything on this side as a plus. The 50 is a 50. So if I'm at the plus one, I have one yard to go for a touchdown. If I'm at the minus one, I have 99 yards to go for a touchdown. We segment it like this. Coming out, is, and that's probably a little too much. Coming out is the minus one to the minus 15 yard line. It's a situation where we need to at least get a first down to, if not even get room to punt coming out of the back of the end zone, at least change the field position a little bit. Midfield, I'm sorry, normal part of the field is anything from minus 16, or if you want to say 20, that's certainly fine too, until we get to the plus 25. That's where our red zone starts. So this is the normal part of the field. So this is coming out. This is, you can call it midfield if you want then to us the red zone breaks down we have two parts of the, we have two parts of the red zone it breaks down quite a bit and this is where i think you can really do a nice job we have a high part of the red zone and a low part of the red zone if you separate it i think you'll find out your play selection at the 24 is not the same play selection you have at the 12. why because you can still at the 24 yard line you could still fit in some of those uh, level three routes that they have to respect and so you still keep the top of the coverage you can keep the top of the coverage if you properly formation it so we look at it is the 25 to the 15 is red zone high high in the red zone and then the 15 to the 5 is red zone low once you get inside the 15 now your level two routes are about as far as you can get they start sinking down the top of the contour of the safeties. They start getting more of a lateral look because you have no over the top. And then we start our goal line inside the five. If we see a defense that's going to go to the goal line on the six-yard line or personnel it, we'll change it that week. But then that's basically what we call anytime we're inside the five, five to the plus one, we're calling that goal line. So we'll go through, and the fourth one we'll do is we'll go play by field position. And we'll say, okay, what are our tendencies? Typically, most guys have midfield, that's normal football, not a whole lot of tendencies. Coming out, um, you're going to be able to tell whether or not that's an aggressive guy, if he's going to take a shot because you do have a vertical field, or if he's just playing it safe to try and, and get the ball out of the end zone. But usually where you're going to find yourself extremely tendency heavy is in the red zone. A lot of coaches will find themselves, if you look at it, a lot of coaches call their favorite play. You're going to be able to find out what their favorite play is when you're low in the red zone, when you're in the 12-yard line, somewhere in that area, because they want their favorite plays to be the ones that score. So you'll find that quite a lot, but you'll be able to see if you have um, some sort of tendency. So that's how we divide it up by that. And then we cross, it, cross over all these. So you'll go through, and these are the main ones we do, and then we go through and we'll say, give me all play by form by field position. So I want to know anytime we're in the red zone and we're in pro trips, we are running this play. The other thing we always do is you always give a run pass option. So in the, in the reports that we print out. So if you looked at it, how you would input it would be like this, going across from left to right as you look at it. Play one, first and 10 at the minus 20 yard line, left hash, formation is uh, pro trips, strength call is right, 
play call or motion or whatever you might have in there is Zen motion. Play call is 38. It's a run. The gain is two and the defense is that. But that information right there, play number, you can do series number two if you want. We usually don't do a whole lot with it. The yard line will give you your field position. The hash mark is something we'll talk about in a little bit here. We also do sort by that. Uh, formationally, motion, play, run or pass. So now you can go through and you can just sort percentage wise. And I'll say the first thing I'll look at is I'll say, all right, give me all my plays. What's our run pass? If our run pass, if we're 58% pass and 42% run, something's amiss, something's wrong. Because uh, we want to be close to 50-50 for what we do. And then once you break it down, you find your run pass breakdowns. If what you want to do is in, in third and long, if you want to be 80% pass, then fine. But if you want to be closer, that judges it. So now I'll say, all right, give me, give me my printout number five is formation by play, by field position, so that I know anytime we're in the red zone and we're in a slot formation, our run pass is 60%. We have five reps, three runs, two passes, we're 60, 40, whatever it might be. So I could start to see where we might be amiss. And then you could just go through there and do it all. Formation by play, by down and distance, however you see fit. I will say this, sometimes we will get three criteria out there for a self-scout. Any more I worry about the fact that you're only going to get a lot of one rep and you're probably, you're probably melting that information down a little too much further than you want. So what do you do with this? When you look at this, in my opinion, you're going to go into this game and figure out what kind of game you want to call. So when we talk about what type of game you're going to call, a lot of times I say that and people say, what do you mean? I hope to call a good game. I hope to be this much run, this much pass. When you look at it as an offense, at least when I look at it as an offense coordinator, Basically, all three games that I'm going to call, based on my self-scout, are going to fall into one of three categories, okay? And I'm going to have a, make a conscious effort when I go into that game based on my personnel versus their personnel, uh, what point of the year we're in, and probably most importantly, who that defensive coordinator is that I'm going against. And it falls into one of three categories. Number one is comfort, number two is complementary, number three is tendency breaking. All three of the games that I call will fall into one of those three categories. What's a comfort game? A comfort game is maybe you're in game two and you came out of a fall camp and you really ran these plays well out of this formation and your kids played fast and you felt good. The plays roll off your tongue when you do this out of this and this out of this. You know what you like. That's a comfort game. It might not be the most earth-shattering, best play-calling game in terms of the way it looks, but you're going to be productive based on the speed of with which you call it, the tempo of the game, and the way your kids play. So that's a comfort. Your base stuff, what you want to run, very simple, very basic. might not be simple, but it just rolls off your tongue. It feels good when you call it. Very hearty. Complimentary would be a guy, when you're going against a guy now who is going to be taught is going to teach hit charts and you know this is going to put the ball here and this is going to put the ball here and they like this and maybe honing in a little too much on um, just the run game and you might want to open up the pass game or just the pass game and you might want to open up the run game a little bit so this would be I know I'm coming out maybe of a comfort game say where I look at my last three self scouts and that defensive coordinator is looking at the same thing I'm looking at he's just looking at it on film or he might have on, on paper printouts and he's saying, okay, when this guy's in I-Pro, he likes to run fullback belly. Um, when this guy is in uh, slot open, he likes to run rollout. Then I'm going to take the complementary play. So I'm going to go through, and if I have a heavy tendency, I'm just going to go ahead and flip that. So if I have a heavy tendency of calling the belly play, I'm going to use all my complementary offense to that. So I'm going to line up in that pro formation, the same one that they're expecting me to run belly out of, and we're going to run the belly pass, the veer release pop pass, whatever it might be. But the complementary one so that their kids are being taught this is what you're going to see and that is what they see in that formation but now we have our complementary pass or run off of it. Likewise we might see uh, in trips formations we might be throwing a lot of bubble. I'm lining up in trips and throwing bubble a lot. Complementary would say let's come back with a pass action run. Let's line up in trips. Let's go ahead and fake that bubble and then let's come back with a draw underneath. Or I'm lining up in a slot open look and I'm always rolling out to it. Well, now let's do the same thing. Let's give them the same look. Let's roll out, and now let's have a quarterback keep it on a sprint draw. So that's complimentary. That's 
giving them what they think they want to see, giving them the same look at the beginning of the play, and then using their complementary plays off of that. Tendency breaking is just that. It's on the continuum. Obviously, this is getting far away from comfort. It's doing everything completely different. Now, it doesn't mean you have to go away from your offense, but instead of lining up in the same formations and changing your play calls, you can now line up and run your same plays and do it out of multiple formations. So if I come out and I am very heavy at running um, lead draw strong out of a slot set, I can say, okay, this is very skewed. I'm 92% running this play out of this formation. I'm going to break all tendencies on this one. It's not complimentary. It's flipping up how you're going to run things. So I know I might need to run this lead draw play or this power pass play to win the game based on who I'm going against. So now you'll say, okay, I'm going to run this out of all these different formations, and I'm not going to give them that slot formation at all. Or if I am going to give them the slot formation and run sprint draw, I'm going to run it to the other side, but I'm going to break all tendencies. I'm going to come out and if I want to run draw, I'm going to run it out of my one back set instead of two back sets. If I want to run ISO, I'm going to do it out of a no tight end look instead of the tight end look because I'm, I'm heavy on that. So when I look at it, I'll come in. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to, this is the first game of the year, this is the second game. It's whatever you think they have on you. We might come in and you might be facing an extremely diligent defensive coordinator who is very anal about the fact that he's going to give his kids hit charts and he's going to know, hey, when they're in slot wing, that, that these are their top three run plays, these are their top three pass plays. When they're in this, this is their top three run plays, this is their top three pass plays. And I might start the season off if I'm going against that guy because I know how diligent, how litigious he is about pounding it into the heads of his kids. I might come in right away and just say, hey, we're going tendency breaking right away. I don't tell the kids that, but that's my thought process. So that's what I get out of the self-scouts. And I think if you utilize that, it's going to help you kind of compartmentalize how you're going to attack that game.